Now, our investigation is different from that which the, um, the state is doing. Uh, we are looking for violations of federal um, criminal civil rights statutes, which is different from what the, um, the local investigation is. But we have brought uh, a substantial number of people here, a number of agents here, uh, who have done a, a great job in the canvassing that they did uh, over the past weekend. They continue to follow leads so that we can um, do a thorough and a fair job of making a determination about what happened um, on August the 9th. Let us not sit here and sugarcoat anything. Due to what is happening at this moment in Ferguson, Missouri, America is now in the tight grip of more than just conversation about racism. The killing of an unarmed man has led many to look deeper into what's happened in recent years that detail a history of racism and racial profiling in and around Ferguson. Add to that, most white Americans need to come to grips with a deep-seated fear that to this day lives in the hearts and minds of more than a few law-abiding African Americans. We need to dig into the roots of this problem before we seek to salve a gaping wound with a Band-Aid. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, a member of our Newsmax Masters and president of McKee Communications, Clarence McKee. Clarence, thanks so much. It is always How a pleasure you? to see you, my Good. friend. I did a little research. Good. We all did. The team here at Midpoint did. And I'm looking at things from St. Louis, from mm -hmm. St. Louis County, mm -hmm. and from Ferguson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. Wrong men sit in jail for city's errors. St. Louis police chief orders probes after officers get racist letter. Ferguson police mistakenly arrest an innocent man. Cop sued, cop being sued over beating, is now a Ferguson City Councilwoman. Mm -hmm. Have we had revealed to us what might be at the very core of a lot of the racism and law enforcement issues in this country, one area of the country that it seems to be rife with problems? As I told you when we were together last time, there's something wrong in Ferguson. Here's the big point, though. For the last past 11 years, Mr. Charles Dooley, a black man, has been the county executive when all of this was going on. It just goes to show that because you have a black person as police chief, superintendent of schools, mayor, or president, doesn't mean that this racism and these uh, incidents don't go on. They don't stop. But it's horrible there. So nobody's asking any questions. One of, the, one of the problems is when you take a look at the demographics of Ferguson, what is it, 67% black? 12% mm -hmm. of the folks in that community voted in the last election. The, year bef the election before that, it was 11%. Before that, 8%. So one thing Sharpton said to the crowd last week that was very true, 12% turnout is an insult to your children. So you kind of get the kind of government you deserve and demand. So I don't know what the people have been doing there for all these years, but they haven't been marching to the polls as they have been marching in the streets. That's how you get a mayor who will pick the police chief, who will diversify the department. You have a 20% black population in St. Louis County. Obviously, a lot of white folks voted for Mr. Dooley, who just lost last week overwhelmingly to a white um, city councilman from St. Louis. So it's not all the fault of whites. Blacks have a lot of responsibility to pick the government. That's what the Civil Rights Movement was about. Then let's talk about that then. Why is it that all these years, knowing full well that going to the ballot box would probably be a better way to do it and would be a more effective way to do it? Why are there still those who say, protest first, and voting never seems to come into their, their conversation. Well, you don't get it on the newspapers for asking people to go vote. We did during the 60s because of the civil rights demonstrations, but everyone got complacent. A lot of the civil rights leaders left the civil rights movement, got into elected offices themselves, and once they're there in a black district, they're there for life. Becoming part of the fat cat exactly. problem itself. For example, this, this lady, uh, state representative, well, she's part of the problem using the F word to the governor. The one who said F you to the exactly. governor in the tweet. Then she says the other day, well, listen, if we don't get an indictment, there's going to be more, more riots. The problem is you cannot have mob justice or lynch mob justice. A lot of blacks were lynched, you know, through lynch mobs. Mm -hmm. If you had had a, the a police officer taken into that crowd, he'd have been beaten to death probably. But you can't have lynch mob justice. There's no leadership on race basically in the country. The governor in that state made a horrible statement prejudging the case. There's no leadership of the police department. I don't know who's running the show. One thing that the attorney general did, even though he went there, it did kind of show somebody cared. But I hope now he will leave and let the justice system go on. But getting rid of racism, it's going to be here for a long time. Remember the Kerner Commission? Yes. After the 60s? The, the conclusion was we have two nations, one white, one black. It's still that way. We don't talk to each other. 
But is the problem then, when you talk about the governor basically saying that there needs to be not only an investigation, but he almost convicted the officer he in did, charge exactly. here. Are we looking then from white America at a pandering to an African-American element, of basically course, of saying that this is exactly what we know you want to hear, so we're going to say it regardless of the fact whether it helps you or not? And then why does the African-American community continue to buy into that? Well, because there are no one, there are very few people speaking up on the other side. It started. You got Ben Carson, you've got Thomas Sowell, Juan Williams wrote, wrote in the Wall Street Journal the other day, an article. Those folks are starting to get their voices heard. But you know, you don't get a lot of press and media for saying, hey, go vote. Stop killing blacks. As we said last time I was here and what other people are saying, if you're black, your life doesn't mean a thing unless it's taken by a white guy. Let a black take it on the same day. Explain that. Well, you didn't, okay, the same day that Mr. Uh, uh, Brown mm -hmm. was killed on that Saturday. That morning in Chicago, a 16-year-old girl, Sharice, Shakice Buckner, straight-A student, wanted to go on forensics. She was shot in a drive-by. 28 people killed the last few, few weeks there. But they're killed by black. Blacks don't speak up. Jesse Jackson was in Ferguson. Sharpton was in Ferguson. They don't give a darn it seems when blacks kill blacks. But let's get down then to the whole issue here of racism. All the things that I have talked about here, all mm -hmm. the different instances. Matter of fact, here's a gentleman, Henry Davis, 52 years of age, missed his turnoff for St. Charles during a heavy rain mm -hmm. one night while driving his vehicle. He was pulled over 20 miles away in Ferguson. It was the wrong Henry Davis. They arrested him on an outstanding warrant. This is this should not happen. Look at this. This is not a man who was accidentally up, was accidentally touched or maybe mm -hmm. just an occasional jostle into the side of the car mm -hmm. here. This does speak, though, to a racist element that continues to permeate this society and certainly what goes on in Ferguson. But how do we then get to the core and stop that? Well, first that? of all, you've got to admit it. I have mentioned in the, the Newsmax column, what you need is the president had his huge summit two weeks ago with African leaders, talking about the United States and Africa. What I think they need to do is have a White House summit conference on this very issue, law enforcement and black America, with uh, leaders from the law enforcement community, black community, to discuss it candidly. But we don't want to talk about that at all. It's a big issue. Blacks why? do feel why? threatened by cops a lot. Because, I, and I have to keep asking this question, why does the first African-American president of the United States, with six years in office, not spend more time dealing with this when it is a constant problem? It's been a generational problem. Is he scared? Wait, listen, we've said this a lot of us for a long time. Mr. Obama got the black vote. He's given everything that most of the other groups wanted, gays uh, in the military. What are blacks, Hispanics, dreamers? Blacks, he hasn't done a thing for black folks. But, so what we're, what's happening is we're going to go over the cliff with him. But no one's making a demand that he do something. He says, I'm black, so what? So whenever you criticize him, you're criticizing him because he's black. doesn't do a thing for black people who want to get something done. And more whites should criticize him for that. But white liberals don't care because blacks are going to vote for him anyway. But he's got to recognize, and blacks should tell him, hey, Mr. President, do something for the inner city. His legacy on this issue is going to be very important that he was probably one of the worst presidents on the history around civil rights. Is, it's too bad. Is there anything that he can do at this point? Well, we no. already know what he should do. I mean, that's been talked about many times. But what? What does he need to do right now? It, it, wait a minute, let, let me back up even a little more. We can't turn this around in two years of a presidency, can we? I mean, this needs to start somewhere, but it's going to take a lot longer. It would seem that the Obama administration has buried this need to eradicate a race, uh, racism and at least nip it in the bud, set it back a couple of decades now. You know what he needs to do? John F. Kennedy became a godsend to black people. The night he went on television after the Birmingham riots and said, a black kid born today, X, Y, and Z. A black girl born tomorrow, X, Y, and Z. He laid out the issues of racism in the United States when he signed up the Civil Rights Bill. Obama needs to do the same thing one day. To get up in front of a black audience and say, we've got a, a white audience, even better, we've got a problem in this country with perceptions of racism. We've got to come together and do something about it. He was going to be the post-racial president. No way. Things are worse now. And he should quit race baiting and pull together the country, and he can do it by being honest and ask, why is this happening? And with 30 seconds to go, I want to go back to where we started all this, and you and many others have told me that it comes down to voting. The African-American community does not do a good enough job exercising its right to vote, getting out and making substantive change. Exactly. You get 95% of the blacks voting for 
the Democrats. So Republicans say, nah, they're not going to vote for us, so we're, so we're not going to try. So you don't have anybody in the Republican Party speak out on these very issues because they say, what benefit do we get? But if blacks always are taken for granted by the Democratic Party, then the Democrats won't listen to them on anything. And blacks other than Sharpton have to start speaking out about it. Always a pleasure, okay. my friend. Come back and let's do this again. We will. Many more times. We need to make some changes here. Later on this hour, here's a scoop. All cops are not evil, not racist, and actually seek to help people. And after the break, Mitt Romney has spoken for many in American on both sides of the aisle when it comes to the president. It's on Midpoint.